Hello guys, all set for today's session I believe. Uh, today we are starting a new section uh, within your preparation for GRE which is called the Analytical Writing Assessment which we are going to be referring from now on as AWA. Okay, right? A W A AWA is what we are going to be referring this as. Now, when it comes to this section, a lot of people, I have come across a lot of uh, uh, GRE aspirants who are extremely casual about their AWA score, which I somehow feel all of you should be absolutely cautious about. Please don't take this uh, in a casual manner because uh, a lot of times this score uh, is useful in multiple ways. Like for example, suppose there are two very similar profiles in terms of score, in terms of uh, the kind of work that they have done, their their uh, uh, statement of purpose is pretty much the same. A lot of times, the AWA score is actually the I mean uh, the the one the decider, right? The one factor based on which they actually pick and choose between the two or or or, or three or how many ever, right? So AWA and uh, AWA I, I also feel is a very good indicator of your comfort level in the language so called English, right? Your comfort level with this language is, is, is very clearly assessed by this section. Because your ability to express yourself, right, your ability to express yourself uh, in the written medium is, is extremely important. Because once you get there, you will be in a position where you have to write a lot of mails, you will have to write a lot of reports. So... Um, for example, your reading comprehension, your RC, all that we have practiced is going to help you, uh, help the, uh, help ETS assess your ability to read, comprehend, interpret and equally important is to test you on your written ability and that's where your AWA comes in extremely handy. Okay, so uh, today we are going to be working on... Uh, the ideating part when it comes to our. Please remember you will have 30 minutes for each task and the way you distribute the 30 minutes you have for understanding, ideating, writing and revising is going to be extremely crucial. Because I don't want to see you coming out of the exam and feel, oh my God, I had a good point, but I just didn't have the time to put that on paper, right? That is something that you should try and avoid. Let's let's ensure that we don't get to that situation because it's, it's something that's going to play in your mind for a long, long, long time, right? So what are the things we need to do in those 30 minutes, right? How much time do we need to read and understand the given topic? How much time do we need to interpret and ideate the given topic? How much time do we need to type? Type here I mean write as I mean type and uh, revise. Because this is where you have um, ample scope to restructure the essay in a manner that it, 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 it is the best way to present it. Right? So coming to today's session. Okay, this is going to be the overall agenda. Right? The way we approach AWA, we need to split the time, make sure we have enough time to do all the four activities and give a very complete, comprehensive, sensible essay. Now, writing part, even though this is what is going to take the major chunk of your time, this will be absolutely unimpressive if you don't do these two sections properly. Okay? Your understanding of what is given and the amount of ideation you are able to do in that little span of time will decide how well you write. Okay? And uh, which, is, which, is, which is the factor based on which your overall score is going to be there. Okay? So, these two steps, understanding the topic that is given and your ability to ideate in that quick span of time is going to be crucial. And that is why 
we have dedicated the first session completely for that. Okay, the first session of Ava is only and only to understand and ideate. Okay, obviously I'll make you write a little, but um, before we get there, I want you to be extremely clear in terms of how to approach this. Clear? Let's move on and understand. Right? <coughs> okay. Now, your AVA score, which is out of 6, right, is... Right, you will have two tasks. One is an issue task and the other is an argument task right both of them will be evaluated on a score of six and the average of the two scores that you get will be your final AVA score okay now this score is going to be important and this score will not be given to you immediately after the exam because unlike the other portions where you have the quantitative ability and the verbal ability being tested, which is more of a multiple choice question. So you get the score immediately, but this one will take around two weeks, to 15, I mean 15 days is what they take to evaluate this and give you a scorecard. Okay. And what does this exactly measure? First thing is your uh, ability to discuss complexities of an issue. Now, what do I exactly mean when I say complexity of an issue? Let me explain this. Suppose there is a topic that's given to you. Are you able to, are you in a position where you understand, analyze the topic from all the possible perspectives? That is how you gauge the other person's ability to discuss complex issues. Right? If your entire narrative, your entire essay talks about a single point of view and does not look at the other side of it to make the entire argument look complete, then it shows you are unable to look at the complexity of the issue. For you, it is a linear line of thought. Most of the times, when we are ideating, a linear line of thought does not necessarily give a complete picture. For every left, there is a right. For every black, there is a white. Right? Do you have the ability to look at multiple point of views and, and, and still strengthen your opinion, present your opinion, present the other opinion as well, and logically explain why is your opinion the opted one is what it's going to text, test. So your ability to look at the complexities of an issue is going to be crucial. Right? And then comes the second and the very important point that I feel is your ability to validate. Right? You prefer X over Y. Right? And I ask you why and you say X is good. This is your opinion. X is good, Y is bad. Is your opinion. Opinions, I'll say this time and again with the sessions that, that, are, that are to come. Opinions are absolutely useless. Your opinion has no value whatsoever but the value actually lies in the way you validate your opinion. Okay? I prefer white during summers. Okay? It's an opinion. Because my mom said I look handsome when I wear whites. Okay? You just smiled, didn't you? Because the entire thing looks so, oh my God, the reason for which he is coming to this opinion is so superficial. For you, it holds no value. So the way I am validating my opinion is absolutely shallow, hollow and useless. 
But the moment I say, I like to white, wear, I mean, I like to wear white during the summers because uh, white is, is, is not something that's going to get heated up very soon. The moment I wear black colors, dark colors during summers, it's going to, it's going to hold back a lot of heat. This does not, this reflects. So uh, it's a little more comfortable when I wear white during summers. Now, the opinion is pretty much the same for both the arguments, but the different difference actually lies in the way I am validating my opinion. So, the way you validate your opinion is very, very important. And as I've always said, and I'll say this once again, your opinions are useless. So the magic lies in the way you validate it. Okay? Right? Then comes your ability to think critically. Now, I'll just take this simple example again. X over Y. Okay? There will be reasons, there will be pros and cons for X. There will be pros and cons for Y as well. If you are a linear thinker, right? Then according to you, X has all the positives, Y has all the neg negatives. But please believe me, there is no decision in the world which has all the positives on one side and all the negatives on the other side. All, all, all positions will have both of them. But are you able to justify your decision with X? By evaluating both the pros and cons of X, right, and the pros and cons of Y shows your ability to think critically of your own opinion. The moment I can, I can see cons in my own opinion, in what I am trying to support, shows my ability to think critical, be critical of my own opinion and still present an argument in which I see my opinion to be positive. Right? Okay? So that's your ability to think in a very effective and critical manner. Okay? Purpose of Ava, obviously, the third and then one of the most important ones is your ability to think critically. And then, something that is very basic, something that is very clearly expected of you, is your ability to present and communicate your ideas effectively and clearly. Why is this important? Now, I told you your AWA score is going to take 15 days. Why? Because it has to be evaluated. There will be two levels of evaluation. One is a computer evaluation. One is a manual evaluation. Okay, the manual evaluation. If a person has to read your essay twice, thrice, four times, five times to understand what you've written, even if you have the best of points, it is not going to create an impact because even though the points are good, the presentation is bad. And you'll not get the desired score. You might not get the score that your points deserve because your presentation does not allow it to present itself in the best manner possible. <clears throat> okay? So, your ideas, are they effective? Are they clear? In the sense that, uh, are you able to prioritize your points in a manner that it comes out as something absolutely comprehensive, well-detailed, well-supported, the way it's on paper, are there paragraphs? Are there logical pauses in the way you present your idea? All this is going to be evaluated. If your ideas are good but the presentation is bad, you will lose out on, on, on precious points. Try and avoid doing that. So all put together your ability to discuss the complexity. Look at the opposite side as well. Think through and validate your opinion, as I say, is not of great value. What actually holds value is the way you validate or reason it out. Third one, 
Do you have the ability to think in a very critical manner? Split it open. Look at the pros and cons. And then come up with your argument is what's going to be important. And then the last and pretty much a very important point is your ability to present it in an effective and a clear manner. Got it? Clear? Moving on. Okay. <coughs> Just a minute. Now, as I said, there are two sections under AVA. The first one is the issue task and the second one is an argument task. Okay. Don't worry, in, in, in the session that we have planned for tomorrow and the day after, that's in the subsequent two sessions. Uh, on one, one full day, we're going to be spending on the issue task, understand what it is. You'll get to practice. I'll give you time to practice. We'll try and understand. We'll write an essay maybe together. Right, and then comes the argument task. Okay, both of them for both of them you will be getting 30 minutes each. Right, so both the tasks put together you will have one hour to write. Okay, if you are somebody who writes regularly, somebody who writes blogs, somebody who, who writes opinion pieces, right, if you have the writing habit, then you will be at ease. But if you don't have that habit, 60 minutes to write a topic where you have to think and write. Unlike your exams where you have studied something related to that and that's what you are trying to reproduce in that exam. Here it's going to be different. Here you need to think and write. Think and write. So you need to get into this habit and that's where good solid practice is going to come in extremely handy. Now, in the issue task, it's, it's more of an essay. I'll tell you it's an essay and I'll also tell you how is it different from the second task. Here it's an essay because there is a topic and you have to write about it. Here you can write your opinion, you can take sides, you can prove yourself, right? You can do all of it. In the argument task, here you are supposed to be critical of an opinion or an idea that somebody has given. An opinion, an idea and with the reason why the author feels a certain thing needs to be done in a certain way. You have to critically analyze, find the faults in the idea, find the faults in the thought process, find the faults in the reasoning or in the way the author is validating his opinion and then put a piece together. Right? Second one, I love it because... When you do the second task, the first thing you need to tell yourself is the author is wrong, I am right. And that's, that's when you find the mistakes. And uh, that's something that all of us like doing, don't we? So that's how the argument task is, is slightly different from the issue task. right? Um, please don't worry about these tasks. In the subsequent sessions, we'll ensure that you have a complete understanding of each task one by one. Okay? I just wanted to give you a sense of it's, it's a 30 minute task. So if you're not used to writing very often, you'll actually find 30 minutes to be a, ne a never ending year. So if you really want to get over this, start writing. Okay. Now let's try and understand what is the issue task in, in, in a nutshell. Okay. This is something that a lot of us fail to gauge properly. In the GRE, they give you a task. Right? They give you a task and then follow it up with a specification. The specification is like the overall framework using which you are supposed to present your idea. The specification of the framework. If you do not stick to, if you do not stick to your presentation, right, if you don't, if you, if you're, if you're not expressing your ideas within the specification, within the framework that is given to you, 
then your response is 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 going to be considered at, as something that is tangential to what was expected from you. Then you might not get the desired score or the score that your ideas deserve because you did not stick to the specification. So, while it is important that you understand the topic, it is equally important that you understand the specification. What is the exact format? Or what are the points that the authors or what are the uh, point of views that the author wants you to consider while you express your ideas? Okay, So your specification is going to be your your ability to stick to a certain specification while you express yourself is going to be extremely crucial. Okay, this point that I just made. Now, even if you are good at writing, it is important that you do your ideation before you start typing. This will help you make sure that you are not missing out on points. And even while you are typing, you have a set of points based on which you can structure your essay. So, the ideation will happen before you start typing. Let's plan in a manner that we don't have to do it simultaneously because that will make the entire thing difficult. So, the ideation part is separate, the typing part is separate. While you are typing, you are absolutely relaxed, you are just focusing on how do I present the points that I already have. So the points need to be on paper. Bullet points need to be there on paper even before you start typing. Okay? So this is something that's going to be crucial and uh, don't worry, if you stick to the run-up that I'm going to be discussing over the few sessions, you'll, you'll get there. Okay? Now, in order to feel in control of the topics or the issues or the arguments that are going to be given to you, there are a few set of words that I want you to understand. Okay? Recommendations, positions, statements, circumstances, address, Claim and reason, consequence, what is stated, what is unstated, assumptions, evidence, predictions, arguments, implications, what is considered to be unwarranted, policy, alliance, support, are just some of the words. Some of the words that I want you to know, like the back of your hand, because if you get stuck, if there is a shade of grey in these words, then while you present or while you understand the topic, you will come across a very awkward situation where you will find it difficult to interpret a possible idea. Okay? Now, what is a recommendation? Okay? Is a recommendation binding? Suppose you recommend your friend to me for a job. If I don't consider your recommendation, am I breaking a certain rule or a certain law? Can I be held against for not taking your recommendation? No. Recommendation is a suggestion. Right? A recommendation is a suggestion. The person who has received a recommendation is the person who will get to decide whether the recommendation needs to be considered or not. Because it is a, it's a suggestion. There is no binding force that will force me to consider a recommendation as a law. Okay? Got it? Next comes your position. What is your position on a certain issue? The moment you are asked to give your position, it means your take or your point of view. Right? 
your position, whether you support, whether you oppose, you support a little bit, oppose predominantly, or you support predominantly or oppose a little bit, it's always a mix or a combination. Okay? So what is your position, your point of view, your take? Position. We understand what are statements. I assume you understand what's a statement. Circumstances. Situation. Now, <laughs> under what circumstances? Suppose you give me a suggestion that I should invest uh, a certain amount and buy a uh, 500 cc Royal Enfield bike. Okay? You have given me a suggestion that I should invest and buy a 500 cc Royal Enfield bike. Under what circumstances would I feel that your recommendation or your suggestion is a mismatch? Under what circumstances could I feel that your, your, your recommendation is bad? Think. If the situation is I want a bike for short distances, low maintenance, which even my wife can also drive if there is a situation. Now, if that is the situation, then this will be a bad choice. Right? But if that is not the situation, if I want a bike that gives me the best of comfort, best of value, something best of longevity, best of performance, then this is a good choice. But there is a circumstances, there are multiple circumstances and situations where this will not be a good choice. So your ability to see circumstances in which certain recommendations work, certain recommendations do not work, is crucial. Okay? Address. 4 bar, A bar, 3 bar, 462. No, that's, that's not the address we are talking about here. The address we are talking about here, does it cover, does it talk about your argument should not fail to address critical issues. Fail to cover critical issues. Fail to talk about critical issues. Right? Do not fail to address this aspect of it. That means you have to talk about it. You should cover that point of view as well. Okay? So address it. In your speech, you fail to address the most critical point. You fail to talk about, you fail to cover the most critical point. So, address is used in that context here. Now, please mark this as something extremely crucial with your hour because a lot of times the, the topic in the issue tar task is presented in a claim and reason format. Okay, now the claim is, I'm the best singer in the whole country. Right? I'm the best singer in the whole country. That's my claim. Reason, I won the XYZ TV singing competition. Okay, in which three people participated. Okay, so there is a claim and then there is a reason. And all the possible combinations are open. For example, you can agree with the claim, disagree with the reason. You can disagree with the raise, uh, the, uh, the claim, agree to the reason. You can agree to both, you can disagree to both. For example, you might feel, you might also accept that a uh, dude, he's like a brilliant singer. He's the best singer in the country. But you will say, Are, I am not saying that because he won that competition in which three people participated. Right? In that case, you are agreeing to my claim but disagreeing to my reason. You might say, boss, you are...